Roswell Flight Test Crew here at Commercial UAV Expo 2024 in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. And I'm back with Orrin Avaram, a longtime friend of the show. How you doing, Orrin? Awesome, Patrick. It's so good to see you again. <laughs> it's so good to see you too. Now, we first got acquainted, I don't remember how many years ago, but a lot. And you guys are working on these flight termination safe systems, which incorporate a parachute. So why don't you tell us what's new? So what's new is that the FAA recently renewed the ability to receive uh, flight over people waivers, the 107.39, and it requires a parachute that has passed ASTM testing and a drone that weighs below 3.5 pounds. And Mavics and others are in that category, and now we are happy to support operators to start renew flight over people, operations over people. Well, that's fantastic. So people can buy a little piece of hardware from you that, that sits on top of the drone. I mean, that's the easy part. The hard part is how do you get the FAA to sign off on that? Right. So nobody gets the FAA to sign off on that. <laughs> but you apply as a user. You show them that you have all the components that they required, including the parachute that passes ASTM certification. And with that, you have high probability to receive a waiver. And just on a panel uh, yesterday it, during this show, the FAA said that uh, years back they approved 3% and now they're already in 50 something percent. So it seems that the FAA are uh, openly clarifying the regulations and at the same time uh, tending or giving more approvals for operators. Yeah, no, that's a good point, because I, um, I actually talked to the FAA not too long ago myself, and they cited that exact same statistic, and they said, yeah, we've got to clarify this, because it's not working. So what exactly, what are the components of this system? There's the parachute, but it's got these little legs sticking off. What are those for? So first thing, according to what the FAA is requiring, there are four things that you need. You need to have a remote ID, uh, your strobe lights, uh, the ASTM uh, parachute, and prop guards. And now the parachute, the ASTM parachute, our parachute, completely does not rely on, on the drone. In this case, uh, if it's a DJI Mavic. So we do not rely on that for the redundancy. Our uh, sensors will identify a free fall or uh, extreme roll. And in that case, mechanically will stop the props. So completely not re relying, no need for SDK uh, or any integration with DJI. And shoot out, using a spring, shoot out a parachute. Uh, flight termination, autonomous triggering, or manual triggering with this small little device which is again a separate remote control only for the emergency and is required by the regulator. Boy, I, I, I must be tempted, especially if it wasn't my drone, to put it up there and push the button just to see what happens. You can, you can. It's a multi-use system. Uh, the drone comes down really neatly. We've done that dozens of times. Take it. Take it for a test. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you said it's a multi-use system. Does that mean if I deploy it, I can repack the parachute myself? Yes. So there are videos on YouTube showing how to repack our system. So physically, you can. But in order to comply with the regulation, you need it to be the ASTM certification means it needs to be repacked by a certified repacker. So if you had an emergency, which we don't expect to have a lot, then you'd send it to our, one of our locations to our certified repacker just in order to, again, fly over people. You can use it, repack it for yourself if you're not flying over people. But if you want to comply with the regulation, you'll have to send it to a repack by a certified personnel, one of our stations in the U.S. Fantastic. Now, where, how many of those are there? How long does it take to repack and get back going? Repack is, is a non-issue. It, it can be done within a day. But again, we assume there will not be that many uh, deployments, emergency cases, uh, flying over people. If I was dropping my Mavic 3 once a week, I would have other problems, is all I'm going to say. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but this, this new approach by the FAA, or the renewed approach, really opens a lot of opportunities for people who are working on real estate, um, media companies, a lot of a lot, construction companies that now will be able to, uh, to work outside of their construction site. Um, so the FAA is, uh, is really showing a uh, modern approach and, and uh, helping operators, I think. No, no, I, I agree. In fact, I was doing a shoot just a couple of weeks ago where, boy, this would have been handy. I was essentially filming a group of people, but of course I couldn't fly over them, so I may have to, uh, may have to look into this here. We are more than happy to support you, and then these days we have a promotion on, on our unit, so they're 1500 and there's a discount code, which is valid now, 15% off 
Use uh, it. <laughs> all right, and is this is for just the Mavic 3 or is it available for other aircraft? We have systems for a variety. We have systems on Matrix 300 and 350 for the uh, Matrix 30, the Mavics, so, and, and other non-DJI products. Outstanding. Well, Oren, a great, a wonderful joy to see you again. Thank you so much, and thanks for sharing the latest with us. Thank you very much, Patrick. <laughs> we hope to see many users expand their business, and we, we're happy to support them. Absolutely. All right. And from the commercial UAV Expo 2024 in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, this is the Roswell Flight Desk Crew signing off.